out of sight, out of mind, perhaps. Now, it's my goal to convince you to keep these materials present at all times and work on ways to make their reinsertion into the industrial and natural ecology groups economically and environmentally feasible. That means hanging on to as much of it as you can for as long as you can until we figure out the best way to do that. Kind of like what they're doing with nuclear waste, only this stuff isn't going to hurt you. Consider that your semester challenge. When it comes to most of the plastic we waste, I will grant you that we need affordable plastic shredders for our homes and communities. Otherwise, the bulk is too much. They should be available at every school and local library, but they're not. Volume reduction is a huge need because when we toss our plastic residuals into the garbage and claim our waste bin is full and needs to be taken out, we're mostly throwing away air. A plastic shredder turns all that volume into a fine powder or into packable granules. Without a grinder shredder, it's hard to store a lot of plastic material before you get overwhelmed by the sheer bulk of it all. But once shredded, you truly can claim that a barrel of single-use plastic residuals is really a barrel of oil equivalent, just a whole lot cleaner and safer. There are other advantages to shredding plastic. If you don't want to store it as a future hedge against inflation or turn it into oil, ironically, I've found that if you do invest the time and energy in converting back into oil, People accept that you would store oil more than storing solid plastic, even though the latter is safer and odor-free. Again, it has to do with our cultural expectations and notions of value. We store ours in, to use in our hurricane lamp, for example, and we've run our weed whacker on the plastic oil for a couple of weeks before it stopped working, probably due to carburetor damage from the unrefined crude oil we produced. If you cleaned and separated plastic and you shred thermoplastics like number two, HDPE, things like bottle caps, for example, or number five, polypropylene, found in yogurt containers and plastic form forks and spoons and coat hangers, you can actually turn the flakes into 3D printing filament using machines like the Philobot or the Protocycler. 